session two of Jesus is King. Now, although there were references to Jesus as King um, very early from the beginning, for example, the angel said to Mary that her child would be on the throne of David forever. And then when the Magi arrived from the east, they asked, where's the King of the Jews? But other than that, his early life doesn't have much about kingship. About the only time was when people wanted to make him a king after he'd fed 5,000. It's not to write at the end that he reveals his kingship and it begins with the entry into Jerusalem on a donkey. This was very deliberate act of Jesus. He's deliberately fulfilling the prophet of Zechariah and he's made an arrangement to get this young donkey so he sends his followers off to get the donkey when he's ready. He'd also just raised Lazarus from the dead and this had brought him a lot of popularity but also a lot of opposition from the leadership. And so really the um, confrontation between truth and blindness is ramping up. As he rode across the valley, the people took off cloaks and they put them on the donkey, which was a way of making it more comfortable for Jesus. It's what you would do for a dignitary. They also put clothes on the, uh, the roadway, which was for us like the red carpet. So what they're saying, they're treating Jesus as royalty. Then it says they wave palm branches. Now the palm branches used to be referred to as hosannas and they were a symbol of great victory. So the people were waving these hosannas, symbols of great victory, but they're also shouting out the word as well. They're proclaiming Jesus as king who was going to bring a great victory. And this is the beginning of showing us who the true king was, what his kingdom was about. Now, most likely they were cheering him because they thought, here is a king who is going to overthrow Rome. They're thinking in earthly terms. And this is probably what explains the huge turnaround that within a few days they're screaming out to crucify him because he hadn't met their expectations. And that is something which sort of turns to anger when you don't get our expectations met. The Jewish leaders were disturbed by the way the people were cheering Jesus. They probably felt it's a threat to them, but also they would have seen that, well, you know, if there's a bit of a riot going on, the Romans are going to come in and they'll try to quell the riot and it could be trouble for us as a nation. And so they said to Jesus, tell your people to be quiet. And Jesus said, even if I told them to be quiet, these very stones here would get up and cry out. Now, it's not just a way of Jesus saying, well, you'll never quieten the people. It's actually a statement that he wasn't coming as an earthly ruler. He was in fact king of the cosmos. Creation itself would attest to his kingship. This was the beginning of the kingdom of God breaking through into human history. Now there's another symbol of the stones crying out. The Jewish leaders had failed to see the truth of who Jesus was. And he's saying, look, even these lifeless stones have got more sense than you. Yes, Jesus was entering Jerusalem as a mighty conquering king, but not the one they expected. And this next week up to the crucifixion is all about the truth of God's kingdom and Jesus as king. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna.
Jai.